Hello, we are a podcasting couple. I'm Brad. And I'm Denise. And if you're into true crime, paranormal activities, aliens, disappearances, or anything that's weird or unexplained, then let us assure you, you don't have to look any further. We have all that, plus much more. We release an episode every Tuesday morning for your listening pleasure. So join us at World's True Crime Podcast and download our episodes on all your major streaming platforms. And remember, the world is not always as it seems. No, it's not. I'm Kevin Van Hentenrick, and you're watching the Deluxe Edition with Casey and Ray. This podcast is part of the Deluxe Edition Network. To find other great shows on the network, head over to DeluxeEditionNetwork.com. That's DeluxeEditionNetwork.com. Welcome to another episode of Deluxe Edition. I am your host, Casey Shearer, and joining me, as always, Ray, the podcaster. How you doing tonight, Casey? Good, Ray. I'm going to say right off the bat, I'm not exactly sure how I got through this uh, peanut butter porter during our episode with Barrel Aged <laughs> Flicks and the uh, Elvis episode, because this is disgusting. Um, mm. But other than that... <laughs> This is uh this has been a great night so far. Uh we yeah. interviewed uh Bobby Ray Schaefer. Uh how do you think this one went, Ray? Well, I'll sum it up like this, Casey. All right. At one point, uh the human centipede movie came up, and all I could think of was listen to this guy talk, is imagine if he was the guy at the front of the centipede, how much better that movie would be if they just turned him loose and let him talk about it. Like what was happening in that movie. But now this Bobby was awesome. He was so much yeah. fun to talk to. Yeah, Bobby has basically retired from Hollywood, living in West Virginia right now, and he he's he's a great storyteller and he's got a lot of stories that he does not mind sharing <laughs> and uh has already agreed to be on um for another episode, so uh that will be scheduled down the line. Um mm-hmm. Yeah, great episode, man. Uh, he's a good dude, really good dude. I mean, how many people will tell you? Like, not many people will invite you, you know, to dinner and shit after you talk, meet them through the internet, you know? Yeah. <laughs> it's pretty cool. Uh, he's a good dude. Um, let's get into the interview right after these quick messages. We are a part of the Deluxe Edition Network. You can find all the other great shows on the network over at deluxeeditionnetwork.com. And the podcasts of the month this month are Spoil My Movie and World's True Crime. Find uh, all of their links over at deluxeeditionnetwork.com. You can find our show on Instagram and Twitter at deluxeeditionpod1e. All of our previous shows could be found over at deluxeedition.show. Uh, if you'd like to support the show, you could go over to whatamaneuver.net slash collection slash deluxe dash edition and purchase a t-shirt uh, either from the Deluxe Edition podcast or the Deluxe Edition network. Or you could go to patreon.com slash deluxe edition pod and uh, sign up over there and i will send you the unedited episode immediately after the recording and we are also sponsored now by getslicks.com if you go to getslicks.com and use code deluxe edition pod with two e's you can get uh, some cool beanies and hoodies t-shirts all kinds of stuff um they sent me this one ray is supposed to be getting a hat 
very soon. Uh, GetSlicks.com and Deluxe Edition Pod at checkout to get 10% off of your entire order. Ray, where can people find you, my brother? I am the Ten Cent Beer Night Podcast. You can find me on Spotify exclusively. You can hang out with me on Facebook and Instagram if you want to message or just see the cool shit I post. And you can buy all kinds of cool merch at my Tee Public store. So go buy stuff. Go buy stuff and subscribe to Ray on uh, Spotify exclusively. He is the only reason I have Spotify downloaded. <laughs> All right, here is our chat with Bobby Ray Schaefer. Good to see you, man. Hey, it's been a minute. Yeah, how's West Virginia treating you? Well, you know, it's quiet. Still there, right? Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Cool. Representing. Nice, man. Um, I just wanted to bring up uh, the last time we had you on, uh, this was going back over two years now at the at the height of the pandemic. And you invited me down any time that I was in West Virginia that I could uh, give you a call, give you a shout. And I did that. And we had dinner and uh, I got a picture taken with you. And a bunch of my friends busted my ass about sharing a piece <laughs> of pie with you. And my my thing was, hey, did you ever share a piece of pie with Bob Vance? I don't think so. <laughs> wow. That's claimed fame. <laughs> <laughs> That's right, man. You look and, great, man. I'm glad, uh, well, glad you you're doing well. That was a good part for me. What's that, bud? I said I let you pay for the pie. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man. Uh, so what, what have you been doing with yourself? I've been writing, mostly. Making cameos. You know, it's quiet here in West Virginia. Yeah. Awesome, man. Well, uh, I want to talk to you about... Uh, this movie that I watched yesterday called A Brilliant Disguise. Well, hang on one second. You mean this movie? Oh, yeah, buddy. <laughs> sure, I I'd love to talk about that one. Great movie, man. Uh, I had never seen it before. Uh, your buddy Nick Vallelonga uh, wrote and directed that, correct? Yes, sir. And uh, it's uh, Corbin Burnson is in it. Uh, it's a, a great little horror movie from the 90s with a, a twist at the end that I did not see coming. <laughs> well, um, it's funny. Originally, uh, in that movie, uh, the female lead was Robin Givens. And she got, uh, we fired her after three days. Oh, wow. Um, <laughs> It was it's a crazy story. I mean, this is Mike Mrs. Mike Tyson is you know, that's who we're talking about here. Yeah. <laughs> right was he at, was he around at that time? What's that? Was he around? Uh well, let's just say I had been bartending up at this place on Sun on Sunset Boulevard called Nikki Blair's big celebrity hangout. And I got them both falling down drunk one night on tequila. So <laughs> the champ. <laughs> <laughs> couldn't handle the Jose Cuervo <laughs> and Mrs. Given certainly couldn't handle it. So anyway, we had a, we had a cast reading of the, of the, of the script and we did it at this theater in West LA and she showed up for the cast reading at 11 AM wearing a bathrobe and combat boots. <laughs> and so I went, what's wrong with this? You know, everybody else was ready to go. And she started doing the voices, you know, the character, the, the female lead character has four different personalities. So she started doing the voices and people in the uh, audience laughed. And right then she checked out. I could tell, you know, she got embarrassed at the reading. And so from that point on, <laughs> Well, let's just say Nick Vallelonga was in a living hell. <laughs> it included one little, her mom was always there. Her mom was a famous, you know, always there mommy. And uh, in fact, the mom called Nick into the trailer and she said, you, this love scene that's in this screenplay, uh, Robin's not going to be doing that. <laughs> 
And Nick says, uh, she agreed to do this script. She is going to do exactly what was written. And she is going to be doing those love scenes. And uh, she said, well, I don't think so. So they said, well, we'll see about that. So they fired her. And as the Givens girls left the set, their little parting gift was they stopped the sinks up in their trailer. What the fuck? And left the water running. Oh, my God. And flooded the trailer. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, it was a classic. So then they had to get somebody to replace her, right? So Lizette Anthony was coming off of a, a Woody Allen movie. I forget which one. But the production company didn't want Lizette. And uh, I remember Nick told them, if, if Lizette Anthony is good enough for Woody Allen... <laughs> She's good enough for you. <laughs> so we, and Lizette did a great job, you know, and of course her name was in the news here not too long ago in the Har uh, in the Harvey Weinstein uh, case. Oh. I yeah, he made some uh, house calls over there in London. <laughs> oh, wow. I did not know that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, what else? I mean, she, she killed that role. She was f fantastic in that. Well, she's an English actress. I mean, she's the real deal. She, you know, a theater actress. I mean, she's not just a film girl. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Go on uh, mentioning that. Is there anything else you want to talk about, uh, A Brilliant Disguise? That I mean, yeah. if anyone hasn't seen it, definitely go check it out. I, I watched it on YouTube. Oh, was it on YouTube now? Yeah. I, I saw that it, uh, it had made uh, Amazon, had it on uh, Amazon at some okay. point. Okay. So. People are getting to see it. I mean, nobody saw it when it came out. <laughs> right. Yeah, it's a shame. Like, there's there's another movie that that we'll get to uh, here in a little while. Uh, a couple of them that you know, it's a shame they don't get the release or, or um, audience that they should. You know. Uh, well, hopefully this hopefully this that, podcast will help. That's the politics of the movie business. You know, uh, distributors have their own agenda. You you never have you, you have no influence over that end of it. Sure. So you mentioned uh, her being a theater actor, uh, actress. Um, yeah. In the last podcast that we talked to you in, uh, going back two years ago, I'm trying to find it where I have it in my notes here. Uh, you're you're also notes. a classic. Yeah, I have notes, but I have notes. <laughs> a lot of notes. <laughs> you're also a classically trained actor. Uh, yeah. This is a question I've been asking people who have a stage background. Uh, how important is it for you as an actor when you get to a set that's being filmed uh, like The Office or Psycho Cop? How is it how important is it to have that stage background? Well, that's the foundation. I mean, they're different disciplines, but the essential part of creating a character comes from, you know, theater training, really. I mean, I've talked to TV actors. They have no desire. <laughs> you know, <laughs> the stage scares them. The thought of, you know, it's scary if, if you if you haven't learned how, you know, how to manage that fear. I mean, I at, before I went on every every show, you, you stand there in the wings right before you go out and you go to the guy standing next to you. Wait, wait, when do I say that? When does that happen? <laughs> <laughs> and then you're out there <laughs> right you know you, you, that's just that's every night's different right that's the best part of it but the best part of doing theater is that you get to do it for you know to sustained two hours in a row without stopping yeah that's what makes it fun okay movies all um, starting and stopping and same thing in tv Right. Um, just for maybe some of the people who haven't heard our last uh, our last interview with you, tell us some of the people that were in your class of uh, of well, theater, the theater class. You, you like me to name drop, obviously. <laughs> I do. I do. <laughs> How's Meg Ryan grab you, young Meg Ryan? <laughs> she wasn't even the hottest girl in the class. I mean, all the guys <laughs> in the class were like Meg Ryan, Meg. Oh my God, Meg. I'm like, eh, I don't know about. I don't know. <laughs> Of course, she was a great actress, but yeah. then she she had the cosmetic surgery, and it kind of ruined the whole thing. Really, kind of. Yeah. Didn't it? She she sure did. <laughs> but Ray and I were Ray and I talked about that on. You're on 60, a, and you're on that on that playing for that team. 
Uh, Nick Cage, <laughs> Eric Stoltz, uh, Michelle Pfeiffer, Sean Penn, yeah. an, an annoying little brother Christopher, <laughs> who uh, he and I got into at one time. Oh, yeah? Oh, yeah. Tell us that story. <laughs> well, let's just say that I, I ended up showing respect for the place, you know. Yeah, yeah. He had it coming. He had a big mouth on him. <laughs> yeah. Well, it, it, came, it, it came across in his movies. Like some of <laughs> some some actors, I like you can tell how they are in real life just by yeah. the way that well, they are on the screen. Drugs. You know, that was the drugs for him. Sure. Yeah, beer muscles. Sure. <laughs> um, I, I don't. I didn't like his chances. <laughs> No, I've yeah, I've I've been next to you. You're 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 a big dude, and this was definitely you know. Well, I'm a hillbilly you're... too. I you know I'm not a California <laughs> boy. I... <laughs> that's uh that's there's only two kinds of hillbillies. There's the, the little guys like me and the big guys like Bob, and <laughs> and it doesn't matter. They can all fight, so it's a it's well, a bad I, bad thing to lot, do. Not a lot of quit in them. That's for sure. Yeah, you can beat them. They they they're just not going to quit. <laughs> So uh, I'm not sure if you can see my shirt here, Bob. I'm I sorry. Heart psych- I heart Psycho Cop Returns. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I like that shirt. I have one of those. <laughs> so uh, let's talk about Psycho Cop a little bit. Um, sure. Were there originally supposed to be five movies? Is that true? There was a five-picture deal signed, yeah. Yeah. But that was just the uh, – Cassie Nelway is the executive producer – uh, protecting himself financially, uh, you know, I was pretty excited because it was 1.2 million. <laughs> Hell yeah! You know, I'd already spent it. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it was smart. I mean, it was laddered. You know, the the, the second, fi- the third film was worth 250. The next film was worth 350. The next film was worth 450. You know, sure. But we didn't we didn't get that far. <laughs> so what what exactly happened i mean what well he became an agent he, he stopped being a producer he became an agent so that that ended uh that ended you know the production oh, okay he came uh, back to it you know 15 years later but um not interested in psycho cop anymore although yeah. he used to brag psycho cop build his house <laughs> and i'd be like where's psycho cop's house <laughs> <laughs> Psycho Cop didn't get it out. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, the la- I keep mentioning the last time that we spoke to you. So you mentioned Psycho Cop three uh, mm-hmm. that you're writing, hip hop Psycho Cop. I wrote uh, it. The <laughs> the script has been done, um, but I never sent it to Cassie, and I, I gave it to Adam Rifkin and Nick Vallelonga. They both liked it, but I don't know if I want to do it anymore. You know, I mean. <laughs> Uh, I saw it as uh, doing it as a pure horror film, you know, um, with some comedy. I mean, you have to do some comedy with that part. Sure. I was going to talk to Satan directly on the iPhone. I thought that was funny. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, bring him into the 21st century. Sure. Well, uh, horror last year, 2022, and this year, there are uh, it's an upcoming episode that we're doing. Um, I think next week, maybe uh, the most anticipated horror movies of 2023. Um, horror is huge right now, man. So, yeah, like, you, have you thought about uh, doing any crowdfunding for this? Or, well, I mean, no, <laughs> I could if I if I had that hunger, you know, to do it. I mean. I don't know. Make me an offer. <laughs> <laughs> I'll set. I'll set up. Uh, yeah, we'll, we'll. I don't want to hustle. You know. I. I mean, if I felt like hustling, I. I. I, I would have done it already. You know. I mean, Dick sure. Dick, I hustled. I mean, you. You know, that's labor of love stuff. I mean, that's sure. That's a film like that requires so much commitment. You know. <laughs> I mean, especially I, I, I would be producing it, so um, sure, that's that's a lot on on the plate. I mean, I I don't want to do it on a shoestring anymore. You know, I mean, I did that already. I mean, 
I think you're supposed to do that at the beginning, not at the end. <laughs> sure. Yeah, like Dixter, you mentioned Dick Dixter. You made yeah. that what for seventy five grand in six days, right? Right. Well, but you know, that was the shooting schedule. I mean, it was three years to get it made. Oh, sure. Uh, I mean, you know, and every day was a battle. <laughs> <laughs> every damn day. Yeah, you did a lot for that movie. You did all the editing, all the like you well, say hustle. You you hustled that to. movie. Somebody had to do it. Right. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, if you if you're on that short of a budget, you know that low. Well, budget, no, but that have... makes it truly mine, you know. Otherwise, it's somebody else's. I mean, if you don't cut it, you you know, you're at you're at the mercy of somebody else. Totally sure, <laughs> right? Like so, back to Brilliant Disguise, right? Yeah, yeah. There's a scene there where I yell at Anthony Dennison's character. You know, your 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 girlfriend was a psycho, and the director wants the whole thing. Uh, you know, fever pitch. I'm doing two pages. Um, it you know as loud as I can. <laughs> well, I don't want to play it that way. I mean, but that's what he wants. <clears throat> so finally, I say to him, "Can we do a?" Let's try it my way. <laughs> well, we do it my way. I think it's much better. But then I go to watch the screening. What's on the What's on the screen? His His, his take. take. Sure. <laughs> no, I know mommy. exactly. Yeah, I know exactly the scene that you're talking about. Yeah, 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 yeah. He's got the yelling, and the yelling just doesn't <laughs> stop. I mean, that was a hard <laughs> scene to do too. I was intimidated. You know, Anthony John Dennison was a hot young actor, and uh, you know. I was that was the first scene I ever uh, stood up against him was that one. So um, we sort of had a girl or two in common. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, that's a uh, you know classic classic older horror movie. It had to have the the montage in there with the sexy dancing girls. <laughs> mm -hmm. Oh yeah, oh yeah, yeah. It's, it holds yeah. up. Yeah, and you had, you ended up with. Uh, I, I saw who you walked out of the end of the movie with there. Who did I come out with? Towards the end of the movie, the uh, the art director, the the lady who owned the <laughs> the place. I saw that. Oh, blonde. <laughs> don't think don't think I didn't pick up on that. You mean um, Mrs. Niven, Mrs. David Niven Jr. <laughs> They got that married was? after that movie. I went to that wedding. That was one of the great <laughs> events in, of Hollywood history. David Niven oh. was one of the all-time bachelors. And so I remember going to that wedding. You know, they released the doves. We were in Bel Air. Uh, the wedding was in the backyard. Sherry Lansing from uh, Paramount was there. I mean, all these big heavy hitters. We get there. <clears throat> David Niven Jr. is already pounding gin. He's pouring sweat. He's nervous as hell. <laughs> you know, uh, and Marianne Williamson, for God's sake, she gives some opening remarks, and 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 she says, "My God, David, I I I I'm thinking how, uh, you know, all the girlfriends you've had, and you, uh, Barbara, what do you have that made this guy settle down?" <laughs> It was an inspiring moment. <laughs> of course, it didn't last, but Barbara did keep the Niven surname. I, I give you oh, that. Yeah? <laughs> Great That's stories, Hollywood man. for you. That's Hollywood. Yeah, man. Um, back I was to... a huge David Niven fan. You know, I mean, that's, you know, Niven was one of the all time greats. Sure. Um, Back to the Psycho Cop over here a little bit. So whose decision was it to play Vickers different in the second one? Because it's completely different from the first one. Um, well, that's the director and me. That's how I played him in the first one, really. But uh, the director had a different idea, and we, we looped the voice in the first one. We did ADR for most of it. You know, it became much more robotic and scary and, you know, less authentic less comic i heard you mention that before adr what what is adr what is that additional dialogue required <laughs> okay oh so like just like a voiceover well yeah i mean you 
uh, if there's any sound in the track that isn't clear, you you go in and clean it up, you know. Okay. And uh, the story about Brando, Marlon Brando, who I met personally, you know, I get this question all the time. Did you meet anybody famous in Hollywood? I'm like, <laughs> I don't know, Marlon Brando, Clint Eastwood, Arnold Schwarzenegger, who you got? <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> you're, you're looking at him. <laughs> <laughs> That's the thing about, you know, Hollywood is but anybody you meet, they're always going to be more famous than you. Right. So they, they can't accept that you're famous. They, they're going to eventually they're going to be more famous than you. So where were we? Where were we? Uh, Psycho Cop. And whose decision was it to play him different in the second one? Oh, yeah, I mean, it was everything changes it. The location, the, you know, I mean, we're uh, in Malibu Canyon, uh, you know, it, shooting at 40 degrees. That's different than being in Burbank <laughs> in a high rise with a bunch of hotties. <laughs> Whole different attitude. <laughs> yeah, you can definitely tell the first one's more like an 80s horror movie. Yeah. And then the second one definitely has that 90s feel to it. The the director was a very stuffy southern gentleman. There's no swearing. There's no nudity. You know, I mean, mm -hmm. he had a completely different idea. And um, Adam Rifkin is his, you know, <laughs> he's proven himself to be an iconoclast. I mean, he he's marching to his own drummer. Always has. Take a look at a yeah. film called The Dark Backward. Tell me he's not, uh, you know, <laughs> eccentric. All right. <laughs> Write that one down, Ray. Oh, yeah. And he did that film with um, Burt, Burt Reynolds' last movie, The Last Movie Star. Oh, really? Oh, that was him? Yeah. I had oh, no nice. idea that he yeah, was I a Burt Reynolds fan. Uh, Burt Reynolds' kid was one of the editors on Dick Dixter. Quint. Okay. <laughs> he um not a big fan of his daddy. <laughs> oh really? Well, when I brought it up, uh he changed topics rather quickly. Oh wow. He turned out he was a Lonnie and he's in the Lonnie Anderson camp. Gotcha. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, that's a good movie though, that uh the last what was it called? The last movie the, the last, last movie, movie right? The last yeah. movie star, yeah. Yeah, that was a good one. That's a good one. Look that guy up. also did Detroit Rock City, too, which I happen to oh, yeah. love a lot. As you can tell, I'm wearing a shirt, so. Oh, yeah. Uh, he's also written a bunch of scripts as well. I mean, yeah. A-list pictures. It, it seems like all he does is sit around and write from from his wiki page. So. Well, I mean, to direct A-list pictures, you, somebody has to offer that to you. <laughs> you know. Sure. He's it, for him to direct a movie. It's a different deal than you know writing one. Yeah. So, uh, Psycho Cop. Did you keep any of the memorabilia from the movie, like the badge or anything? Oh yeah, sure, sure. I have did the badges. I have the black leather coat from the first movie. Uh, what else? That's about it. Did you just kind of wander off with them, or did they actually give them to you? I wandered. <laughs> <laughs> got a phone call from the producer on the second one hey have you seen the badge <laughs> huh what about it I, I left it in my dressing room you mean the one with 666 on it that badge <laughs> huh no I haven't, I haven't seen that lately it's oh it's on the shelf there <laughs> I collect stuff. I mean, I've got 75 Bob Vance t-shirts in the closet over there. You know, <laughs> it's stupid. I just bought a Vance refrigeration license plate yesterday morning. I had to have it <laughs> going on in the car. <laughs> nice. I have a Vance refrigeration shower curtain. All right. <laughs> I have a Vance refrigeration glass. All right. <laughs> I was going to wear my Vance refrigeration. I have a Vance refrigeration t-shirt as well. 
I was going to wear that, um, but I try to wear a different shirt on every show, and I mm-hmm. had already worn that on a pa- on a previous show. So here's the weird thing. So I I meet this girl. She's got a a young daughter who's a huge fan of the show. Could I come and read uh, the office elementary school book to the kindergarten students? <laughs> <laughs> so I do it. I go read this book. These kids have no idea who I am or why I'm reading them a book. <laughs> but I sign, you know, little autographs for them, you know, cards. And it really, I realized, you know, I'm just going there for the teachers, really. They're the ones sure. that are happy that I'm there. <laughs> They're all fans of the show. They're all getting their picture taken. I'm signing stuff for them, you know. So I'm like, oh, okay, this is what's happening. So... <laughs> I think, well, you know, no big deal. You know, had a nice lunch. After that, all I paid for it. <laughs> <laughs> this story makes the national wires. It's on my news feed for a week. <laughs> a picture of me reading the book. <laughs> <laughs> Charleston actor reads the school, <laughs> you know, it's a silly story, but there it was. Every day I, I scroll, I'm like, MSN. It, what? What's this? <laughs> I'm thinking, well, it must have really been a slow news day, <clears throat> but it went on for a week. So now I'm getting all these invitations to go read <laughs> <laughs> at in elementary schools. I, I shit you not, I've gotten like three or four <laughs> invitations, and I'm trying to politely say no, you know, I mean um, – I don't want that, you know, to be my focus. <laughs> I enjoy it, but again, I'm doing it for the teachers, you know, yeah. more than I am for the kids. Although maybe someday they'll watch the show and go, oh, wait, sure. he came and read to us. If you show up in full psycho cop gear to read to the kindergartners, they'll stop asking you. Well, when I showed up uh, to read... Um, the Bob Van, the Dunder Mifflin story. I open my mouth. I I say <laughs> that, hello. I'm so I'm Bobby Ray, and the little girl raises her hand. She goes, "You're scary." <laughs> <laughs> I go, I wasn't even trying. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. Um, I have two more quick questions about the uh, Psycho Cop. So the Rodney King scene where you're getting beat. Um, yeah. Did did anyone actually hit you during that scene? Well, we filmed that scene twice. We did it. I did get hit originally um, in the first one. We didn't use it. We had a problem with focus, so we had to redo it. Uh, (laughs) Adam Rifkin had hired these locals, people that lived in the area, alcoholics and homeless people, and he was people in the scene with them. And he was actually giving him a bat so I could smell this one guy. And he was hitting the hell out of me with <laughs> this Whipple bat. <laughs> so I grabbed him. I'm like, Ripkin, who is this? And he goes, he, he looks great, Bobby. And I'm like, if he hits me with his bat one more time, I'm going to shove it up his ass. <laughs> he stinks. <laughs> the weird thing, though, was we were shooting on Santa Fe and Fifth, which is really rough area in LA. And I had the burn makeup on my face. And this little kid had been in a car wreck with his family that night, right in front of the bar. And then he came into the bar and I did this slow turn, <laughs> forgetting that I had that face. <laughs> he took a look at me. <laughs> Went running out of the bar. I was like terrorizing people, not even trying. <laughs> That's awesome. Uh, so my, the last thing I wanted to say about Psycho Cop is uh, it's about the second one. Uh, Julie Strain just recently passed away last year. Anything uh, anything nice to say about her? Oh, yeah. Yeah, no, she was, she was uh, awesome. Um, she gave me uh, a signed penthouse. Uh, you know, her cover, and it said, Bobby Ray, I still have it. (laughs) You are the man of my dreams, Julie. Hugs and kisses. 
And I said, I've always told people that's the only time that she ever wrote that. Sure. That one time. <laughs> <laughs> she never used that one. Because I always use the same one. I always use best wishes or keep cool, you know, those kind of things. But sure. hers was, you are the man of my dream. <laughs> I believed her. <laughs> I had uh, Lar Park Lincoln sign something for me one time, and she signed uh, "Watch Your Back." And she said, I, "I I don't know why I wrote that. I swear to God, I've never written that for anyone else." Like, okay, mm. okay, sure. <laughs> you well, your first mistake was believing believing an actress. Never, <laughs> ever, ever, <laughs> ever. <laughs> All right, let's talk about uh, Kenny Rogers. You worked with Kenny Rogers uh, not that right. long ago, right? In the, in the, uh, we, Ray and I were talking about this before. I said something earlier about not that long ago, and he said that was 2005. I was like, well, that's not that long ago. <laughs> was that when it was? No, I don't, no I'm not sure when. Now. I'm not sure when the, the guy – it was a Geico <laughs> commercial, right? It was later than that. Yeah, it was, it was definitely in the 2010s. Um, I would say 2012-ish, somewhere in there. The show was established. Uh, maybe it was 2009, 10. I don't remember exactly, but you know that it played um, like 20, 28,000 times or something like that. I mean, that was a great spot. Uh, you get to hang out with him. <laughs> yeah, oh, I'm a huge fan. Uh, and talk to him. You know, it's all about him. It was a very easy schedule. They're not working Kenny Rogers hard. That's right. You know, it was half a day for Kenny. And um, he, it was hard for him to sing uh, even that little bit, you know, um, which was kind of sad because, you know, that's that's a great song. The video is great, too. I love Kenny Rogers. Yeah, it's a great commercial. Yeah, it's an all timer. I a lot of I read I saw it the other day after you posted it. I hadn't seen it in a long time and I read some of the comments and people a lot of the comments were this is my favorite Geico commercial, you know, <laughs> stuff like that. Yeah. Yeah, I remember seeing it when it was on, um, but I, I didn't remember you being in it. Uh, but it it's it's so good. <laughs> I watched it so many times now. I show everybody, I'm like, check this out. Bob Bob Vance is in this. <laughs> Yeah, it was a great day. A recent movie. This is a recent movie that you did. Uh, another great, great movie. You have a small part in it, but uh, Caged with another okay. uh, Office castmate, Maloria Harden. Uh, she was Jan on The Office. Yeah. Um, what a great movie and, and a, a great character for her to play. Um, something that you definitely wouldn't or that I, I didn't think that she would, you know, play a character like that. She was terrifying. Hell yeah. <laughs> Gum chewing, terrifying. Um, yeah, I haven't seen it yet. It was a interesting set, I'll say that. Um, I mean, he was working with, pers the director was working with perspective. I mean, the whole thing was about making you feel caged by the end of the movie. I, right? I'm telling you. The I walls was... should be closing in on you. I mean, we were shooting in really small spaces, you know, uh, a lot of uh, a lot of jail time in that one. <laughs> yeah. Was that filmed out of real jail? Life of an actor <laughs> hanging out at Palmdale Correctional Facility down at, and I was down at USC, down shooting downtown. <clears throat> yeah, those places are rough. Yeah, it's a it's a really good movie for. Uh, you said you haven't seen it. You should check it out. It, I definitely I felt I that haven't. exact same I way. Just haven't brought myself to watch it yet. I was saving it. Sure, <laughs> um, I felt that way though. The way that you mentioned, like that, you're like it's if that's the way that it was meant to make you feel, it definitely made me feel like yeah. that. It's a really good movie, and I'm that good. that you know that takes me back to. You know, um, the one that we mentioned earlier that you were in, uh, A Brilliant Disguise. Like, it's it's a shame that these movies don't get the the viewership or, you know, the distribution that they should because it's it's a really good movie. 
Well, what did Lauren Bacall say? Just because you haven't seen a movie, that doesn't make it old. You know, movies always new and, until you've seen it. So it doesn't matter when you've made it. You know, if you haven't seen it, it's, it should hopefully hold up, you know, on its own. Absolutely. Otherwise, it's... Mm -hmm. I was watching a movie right before I got on with you guys, The Black Stallion. Great movie. <laughs> so good. So timeless. So perfect. Couldn't improve it. Wouldn't change a frame. You know, every time it's on, I end up not being able to switch the channel. <laughs> it's how good it is. I'm going to have to put that one down. I, I haven't heard of that one. The Black Stallion? Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's early 80s. Nice. Yeah, it's about a horse. <laughs> <laughs> if you like uh, horses, I love horses. Yeah. I Horses may be the most cinematic animal of all. I mean, it's actually the very run. first piece of of film was a, is a horse running. You know that? Would be right. Yep. It's the very first piece of film ever created was a horse running. Did not know that. Thank you for the info. Did uh, you know the average age of um, <laughs> a male Native American? How long could they expect to live? What was their life expectancy? When are we talking? Native American. Native American, like back in like Anytime, Columbus Day? Yeah. yeah. I'm going to say, day, I'm gonna say 26. I'll go 35. Close. 26, 28. 28. Yeah. Yeah, this is something that you and I had talked about uh, in our meeting, like when yeah. we when we had dinner. The, well, I did not know the... that. That's something <laughs> I just recently learned. But I'd read an interesting piece about how when a society meets a technological superior, it's inevitably going to change it, if not destroy it. it. That's what technology does to societies, and I hadn't really thought of it that way, but. When you think about it, it makes a lot of sense. Absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, one more movie um, that I think people should see, and uh, it's another, you know, very small part in this, and it's one of your very early roles, and you mentioned it the last time that we talked to it, but we kind of just brushed over it. Um, Hollywood Shuffle yeah, with uh, John Witherspoon, Keenan Wayans, Damon Wayans, uh, Helen Martin, Dom Herrera, and Paul Mooney are all in this. What was that set like? That was amazing um, because we just did it out of love. I mean, it was uh, we weren't getting paid. I mean, um, I played Clint Eastwood in that movie as well. I did not make the <laughs> that did not make the edit, but uh, you know. That movie is, I watched it again the other day. There's a famous guy who recently died named Kevin Samuels, sort of a relationship guru. And he quotes it all the time. Because <laughs> I've been watching some of his videos. And he, he quotes the line from my scene, which is, if you can't take pride in your job, there's always work at the post office. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Well, that was funny because I improved in that scene. I Robert didn't expect me. I said, "Make up wardrobe, get some uh, Afro sheen." This man looks nappy. <laughs> well, they, that was not in the script, <laughs> so I was I was taking a big gamble by doing that. There was a moment of stunned silence. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because like for anyone who you know, mm -hmm. anyone who hasn't seen the movie, uh, Rob, Bobby, Bob, Bobby, or Bobby, Robert, you were one of maybe five white people in that movie. It was an entire black cast. Yeah. Well, hmm. you know, um, Robert started laughing, and then he and I, every time we hit the mark for like a half an hour, all we did was break up laughing every time we looked at each other we'd start laughing and uh so you know it was a great experience it was a lot of fun i remember i had a really rough experience at the screening where there was a a screening a pack theater on on sunset i go there i turn around and there's my girlfriend she's a date of another man oh <laughs> 
And I go to her, what are you doing here? <laughs> And she said, was, what are you doing this... here? I said, I'm this in the was... fucking movie. <laughs> <laughs> no. Was this Susan Day? No, 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 no. I, Some... This was a couple years later. <laughs> okay. Hollywood yeah. Shuffle does, for a comedy, have a great message behind it. That The whole character of, uh, I don't want to play drug dealers and thugs and all that. Yeah. For, for a comedy like that, to have that message, it kind of gets overlooked a little bit, which... I think it's a shame because it's it's a poignant message to society that uh, well it changed the landscape. I mean, Robert went from that to directing uh, Eddie Murphy. He directed Raw immediately after that. He directed. Oh, wow. He was with in De- with Denzel Washington in a a a, car- um, a reggae movie they made together. I mean, and then he made Parenthood. He had a series that ran for ten years that was very positive. I mean. Hollywood Shuffle changed Robert's life. <laughs> yeah. He spent $100,000 on his credit cards. And I've always said that it only took me 27 years to figure out that that was the message that he had taught me was to make your own damn movie. It only took me 27 years to figure it out. <laughs> With Dick Dixter. Yeah. Don't wait and, for people to give you a part, play the part that you need to play. And coming soon, Psycho Cop 3. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I've done it. You know, I mean, it, I, I could do it better, you know, but again, they would have to make it worth my while. I'm not going to do it out of love and blood and sweat and tears. Sure. Um, you mentioned that, that the Hollywood shuffle was a, a labor of love. So did you like, were you hanging out with the Wayans brothers? Like, you know, you knew all those guys. Like, how did, how did you get involved with that? Well, I, I was dating the uh, casting director. <laughs> <laughs> that'll always that'll help well she was a big fan <clears throat> she was a big fan in fact i i remember i met with this chinese director and i was wearing this black trench coat by martha and francois gerbeau it was a french <laughs> french jacket and he was wearing the same one so we immediately bonded <laughs> so i go back and I get a call from the casting director and she says, listen, there's an offer out to this actress named Sharon Stone. And I'm like, who the fuck is that? Ah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, the hubris. <laughs> so, well, um, I, I want favored nations. Whatever they're paying Sharon Stone, they better plan on paying me. <laughs> <laughs> but she didn't have any credits then, you know. Mm-hmm. I had more sure. credits than yeah, that was your, I think, fourth, your fourth credit, right? Well, it fell, it fell through. We were actually supposed to shoot in Vietnam, and uh, I was excited to go, and it, uh, the money fell through. You know, I was all, I mean, I was all set to go. They were that supposed to shoot Hollywood Shuffle in Vietnam. What's that? They were supposed to shoot. No, Hollywood this was another Shuffle? movie. Oh, another okay. The Chinese director. Oh, okay. Um, they had me and Sharon Stone. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Ray, before I move on to, I have one more question for Robert, and then I have a couple fan questions. I know you wanted to ask him a, a few questions about some of the movies that he was in. Yes, sir. So uh, you find yourself quite often in these lower budget movies that I absolutely love. You make these cameos in like Mega Shark versus uh, Crocosaurus. Mega Python versus Gatoroid, uh, Super Shark, FDR, American Badass. That's a I love that movie. That was funny. Um, how are you picking these? Is someone else just been like, "Hey, this is a, a, a hilariously weird movie. You should do it." Or are you the one who's like, "Hey, I really like this one. I want to do." Well, it. a little bit of both. You know, it was interesting because I did this uh, French TV series that was called uh, a girl. Uh, gets a gun a girl is a gun with denise richards and the french director says to me bubby <laughs> bubby i told someone that you were in the movie and they said he does all the coolest movies <laughs> <laughs> i just did that so i could imitate my french director <laughs> 
And I, no, I didn't really, you know, although, I mean, there is some conscious effort. I mean, when I did Zombievers, it, there's mm-hmm. one scene in it. I did it because it was a favor for the casting director. And it was a first time director. I mean, those are a lot of considerations that go into it, you know. Um, the One of the mega sh- shark movies was my cousin was directing. Super Shark, my cousin was directing. Um, you know, that's how that happens. I mean, I, these weren't things that I went out and chased down. <laughs> now, they sure look cool on the wiki page because I'm scrolling down. I'm like, I've seen almost every one of these these movies. You know, I, I just can, uh, I can enjoy uh, mega uh, Python <laughs> versus Gatoroid, Debbie uh, Gibson and Tiffany. That was epic, an epic film. Maybe one of the funniest films ever made, actually. Yeah, I don't know. Zombie Beavers is pretty goddamn funny too. For <laughs> there's some scenes in that where I'm like, "Holy shit, did that just happen?" <laughs> I, I was like, "This thing's going to generate millions of internet hits." <laughs> yeah. <laughs> just the title. Yeah. Absolutely. Well, that's the reason the Psycho Cop ma- got made was the title. Director, I mean, uh, Cassie always never even read the script. But that that also, you know, that goes back to the VHS days. So when me and my boys would be in the store, uh, a cover like Psycho Cop, that's yeah. an easy easy one to grab. And yep, we're what this is our movie tonight, Psycho Cop. Well, so. it was a hundred dollars. What was on VHS? That's you know, all VHSs were hundred bucks. Yeah, wow. that's why we went to the store and rented them. <laughs> well, it took a year. Uh, that's the biggest change was that it would take a year from, you know, the film being released to where it got the release on videotape. Mm-hmm. But yeah. now, you know, it gets released concurrently with the release. Yeah. It streams, the DVDs go out, although people don't even make DVDs anymore. So the whole thing has yeah. changed. Everything has changed. Yeah. I went to see a movie in the theater. Yeah. Like, I still go see movies in the theater. And then I came home, and I'm scrolling through, and I'm like, are you fucking... Like, this is on... I can watch this on TV? (laughs) What the fuck? (laughs) Well, some things are better in the theater. Yeah, Yeah. they are. Like, I'm not... I'm. I was telling, texting Ray about this yesterday, and this has nothing to do with your your career at all, but... um, I went to see that M. Night Shyamalan movie, the new one in the theater... Yeah, and I'm not a fan of his uh, by any sh- stretch of the means. Right. That was a good. That was a good fucking movie, and it, it should be seen in the theater. Well, he knows his trade. You yeah. Know. Of course, the the scares, the frights that he's doing are nothing new. Well, this yeah, one was completely around. different. <laughs> no, yeah, you're right. Yeah, they, yeah. The tour, been... the tour was invented. I mean, sure. nothing's really changed. You can show yeah. more blood. Yeah. More gore, um, but that's about it. Yeah, the you mentioned a girl is a gun. Um, Ray yeah. mentioned going to the going to the, the you know the um, blockbuster. Or, uh, we had Hollywood Video and picking something up because of the cover. Um, this a girl is a gun. Scrolling through your IMDb page, that the cover of that makes me want to watch it, but I can't Girls find it not. anywhere. The script is terrible. I'll say it. The script is terrible. <laughs> Really? I never understood the script. <laughs> it was a miniseries. It was a French TV miniseries. It was designed especially for streaming. But, the, uh, I mean, the sense the script was French. I mean, what can I tell you? Sure. Well, the I love their looks food. Cool. <laughs> I love their sauces. <laughs> but movies, I mean, they don't make American movies. They make French movies. Sure. French movies are best left to Frenchmen. <laughs> That's my feeling. I could be wrong. I don't think I am. Yeah. I went to the Cannes Film Festival one year. Psycho Cop went there. No way, really? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the old French people hated that Nazi storming around in their city. <laughs> <laughs> Because I had that fake little gun. And so all these French gendarmes would chase me down about that gun. It was stupid. <laughs> I had to do personal appearances in the outfit. You did personal appearances I did, in France. I did. 
personal appearances that I had to walk through old can in, in the outfit. So, uh, you know, it was weird. I mean, I got mobbed. <laughs> the best part, though, was uh, Christopher Lambert had just played Tarzan, right, which was a sensation. My poster hung outside the Carlton on the terrace, right, which is where everybody went to drink. So I sat, I sat next to that poster the whole fucking week. <laughs> <laughs> there I am, 10 feet tall. And uh, so Christopher Lambert said, uh, psycho cop, I've wanted to meet you. I got to do two Frenchmen tonight. What the <laughs> fuck? <laughs> uh, I've wanted to meet you. Uh, I'm having a party on the yacht tonight. Can you come out? I'm like, me and my friends could come out. We're not doing anything. <laughs> <laughs> so we went out on the yacht. We had a good time. It was a hell of an evening, night, morning, <laughs> day, week. <laughs> Don't remember. Well, as I <laughs> mentioned earlier. Man. He was Tarzan. He had to say more. <laughs> as Tarzan I mentioned. Psycho Cop in can. <laughs> Wrap your head around that. <laughs> As I mentioned earlier about uh, when you mentioned Chris Penn and, uh, you know, being a dick, I, and I mentioned how you can tell how people are in, yeah. in real life. I can tell or, I, you know, and I've met you. Um, I know that you like to have a good time. So uh, I'm sure that that was a, a blast. Well, we should ask a German journalist how she feels. <laughs> <laughs> Let's just say she got compromised in the hallway. <laughs> oh man, right with her story. Um, story, gentlemen. With her story. <laughs> Am I uh, am I missing anything, uh, Ray? You want to touch on anything else before I get into these fan questions here? No, I think it's time for the fan questions. Uh, you know, this guy he makes this easy. So let's turn it over to fan questions. All right, um, so Marin Draith, this is a, a weird question. Uh -oh. um, would you rather it, shit? Is, is it is it about like uh, paternity tests and stuff to find out no. if they're related? No, it's just a weird question. Okay, all right. Uh, would you rather shit out a watermelon or pee out a golf ball? <laughs> That's the weirdest question anybody's ever asked. <laughs> Why would I do either? No, I would get out a watermelon. That'd be easier than pissing a, a golf ball. I've had, uh, what? what's that? The kidney, kidney stone? stones. Kidney stones. I had those once. Yeah, you I had a friend. get those again. I had a friend of, of mine had several of those in a month, and it was, I know exactly what you mean. Well, there's um, no yeah. solution. No. Weird question, no. Uh, no. Man, but... <laughs> no, there's nothing you can do. Just wait to pass it. I mean, you're going to, however long it takes, 24, 48 hours. I mean, you can just suffer. Yeah. Um, all right. Uh, we already touched oh, on this. Be better than that. <laughs> <laughs> we touched on this a bit. But, How about uh, this one? Did you meet anybody famous in Hollywood? <laughs> uh, we already, we already know. <laughs> Uh, Steven Gervais of the Steven Gervais podcast and friends, uh, he would like to know, we touched on this, uh, you know, a little bit. What was it like filming Psycho Cop? It was hard. It was, um, uh, it was a lot of hard work. I mean, it was, but it was my first, you know, big thing. So I, you know, was ready to go. I mean, I had three months to train for it. I had a private trainer. Um, I mean, I worked like a bandit to get ready for that thing. Um, and then we shot nights in 40 degrees in Malibu Canyon. Uh, I mean, it had the highs and the lows, you know, because I didn't get the reward from it that I was hoping to get. I mean, I got the experience of making it, but I did not get the reward that I wanted. I got to sure. make another one, but which is better than some people can say. I mean, you know, I should always be thankful for what, for what I did get, you know, <laughs> sure, but that's Hollywood. That, that's the cult. It always makes you want more. Sure. All right. This is something that I tried to avoid the entire episode. Uh, 
but we have we have to touch on it. Katie Young, which scene of The Office was the hardest to film because someone kept breaking character? None. No one broke character. Really? No one. That's pros, pros. <laughs> Come on, man. <laughs> I had this idiot the other – well, I, I shouldn't call him an idiot, but <laughs> – He's confused. He's an actor, or he claims to be an actor. He's 36. He lives in St. Albans, West Virginia. And what can I give him any advice? I'm like, yeah, move to New York or LA for one thing. You can't act in St. Albans. You know? <laughs> I mean, so what? You got to do one movie, big deal. I mean, you have to be in the fight every day, every day, every day. It said to me, it sounds like you're having a midlife crisis. But this guy said to me, he actually said to me, because I feel in my heart that I can handle John Krasinski and Steve Carell. Oh, my God. I'm like, what the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> what kind of bullshit is this? <laughs> you shit your pants. Are you kidding me? You, what do you mean handle him? You, you think you could stand across from these two professionals? You? Come on. What in the hell? That's like that's like me saying, you know what? I'll get in Tiger Woods' foursome and I'll rip one down. I'll I'll drive him on on the first pole. <laughs> what the hell are you talking about? There's no way. You <laughs> I mean you have to know your own limitations, don't you? Yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. I mean, I can handle Krasinski and Carell. Come on. Well, unfortunately, there's a whole generation that grew up being told that they can just do whatever the hell they want. So that's what happens when kids are told. That's like being in the backseat of a car and somebody tossing a bobcat in there and rolling up the windows <laughs> on you. You think you can handle that bobcat? Drive, Ricky Bobby. Get out. <laughs> You're in his way. <laughs> you ever seen a mad bobcat? <laughs> They're big critters. With teeth yeah, actually, and, and, I just and watched the and, and, and a bad disposition. I, speaking of bobcats, and have I ever seen a, a mad bobcat? I just watched a tick, one of those damn TikTok videos of a bobcat like latching onto a dog, and Ooh. this this the owner of the dog was right there, and he just grabbed his stick and he was just beating on this bobcat, and he would like the bobcat just had this dog wrapped, and he would not let go <laughs> that's crazy it's sad to lose your dog that way i know that's but, the food chain they call that the food chain <laughs> yeah. yeah that's kind of like that guy you gave that nice advice to you know what he says you know who the most famous person i ever met from la is <laughs> bobby ray shaver that dick <laughs> bobby ray shaver that's how he tells that story <laughs> well you know He's going to be in St. Albans telling that for the rest of his life. <laughs> I'll always be Bob Vance, man. Duration, only off the greatest TV show of all time. Hell yeah, man. Other than that, other than that, and the 40 yep. movies I made, what the hell? I <laughs> nothing. That's funny. All right. Uh, <laughs> stick, stick into the fan questions here. Deanna Marie would like to know, was the Phyllis hug worth $1,000? It was worth uh, 10 times that, you know, of course. I got to beat Michael with the big boy wallet. And, uh, you know, I'd spend $1,000 on a fiddle suck any day. Especially when the office is the one paying for it. <laughs> Absolutely. All right. Jordan Beckwith would like to know, um, when you were hired on as Bob Vance for the office, did you know that it was going to be a recurring character? No. No, not at all. I never knew that there'd ever be another appearance. I went from one to the other without knowing. Never knowing. In fact, wow. Toby, Toby, I still need to chew his ass for cutting me out of season eight. Thanks a lot. <laughs> Was he in charge of season eight? Yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah, him and James Spader. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's right. Yeah. Not a fan. I kind of died off. I kind of died off of the when michael left yeah oh yeah 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 that changed i think it. a lot of people did um that changed he, it 
Jordan has a, a second part of that question. Um, sure. How did you how did you feel when you heard that you and Phyllis would become the ultimate couple? The Phyllis would become what? The ultimate couple. Who like who the, said that? The, uh, this was Jordan Beckwith. He said, also, how did he feel when he heard that you and Phyllis would become the ultimate couple? Like, you guys, the, it's still, uh, there's several lists that uh, yeah, Phyllis no, and Bob I, are. I get that. Um, we made that happen. We played true love. We always said, let's make this true love. You know, your first love. So that's what we played, and that shone through without even really trying. Yeah, I mean, the thing about Bob is every scene that he's in is all about Phyllis. He never makes a scene about himself. Right. Well, yeah, you did it so well that in our last interview, I asked you if you guys actually hooked up. Like, was there an actual relationship <laughs> between you guys? Because you did it so well. <laughs> I'm a hell of a good actor, boys. I ain't that good. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> why they call it acting gentlemen <laughs> now sometimes right, you, know, you, you maybe need to stick your fingers in there and get burned a little bit you know <laughs> I've, I've had that happen a time or two mm -hmm. generally as a rule though you just you know you, you you don't you come up to the line but you don't cross it sure all right, Bob, this has been great, man. I have uh, one last question for you, and then uh, we'll close out here. Um, is there anything that you want people to know about maybe that uh, you've been in but maybe doesn't get enough credit? We mentioned a couple of, uh, couple of no, them No, you can uh, get me on Cameo.com. You know, I still make the fan videos, so I, I appreciate those. In fact, I just made someone's uh, Valentine's Day uh, cameo three years in a row. <laughs> nice. Talk about repeating the joke. Was it? Uh, was it with the <laughs> same person? Joke for Eighteen years. You going along with it for three years? This guy's wife is sitting there going, "Holy shit! Not another <laughs> cameo from Bob Vance for Valentine's Day. Get me a goddamn sweeper, a new." <laughs> Get me a new uh, dishwasher or anything, but a cameo <laughs> from fucking Vance. <laughs> what's this? Uh, what's this? The Onania Club that is listed on your. That's a weird story. Um, I got this phone call from an email message from Tom Six, the director. Uh, and I didn't know anything about, you know, the human worm or any of his, the human centipede or any of his uh, outlandish stuff. And he wanted me to be in this movie because he'd watched my demo reel. <laughs> wow. So I'm like, okay, first of all, in 30 years in Hollywood, no one has watched <laughs> my demo reel. You're the first guy to ever <laughs> watch this fucking demo. Are you kidding me? And you want to give me a job? Okay, I'll do it. <laughs> it was a long day. It was a rough day. Because uh, the girl that was playing my wife was an amateur, and she was overacting and crying. So I don't know if you've ever been around a crier. <laughs> <Yep>. <laughs> Someone who's acting. <laughs> crying. It's a long day. <laughs> you have to keep your mouth shut. You know, you got to be nice. They go, honey, put a sock in it. <laughs> You're killing me here. You're stuck in focus. You get that? <laughs> what the? It's about a woman who shows up to tell us that uh, my son has died, and then she goes and masturbates. I mean, the Onaya Club. It's, you know, high art. All right. <laughs> All right. We can skip that one, Casey. <laughs> yeah, I don't think that's for the masses. One, uh, one that I don't think people should uh, skip. I I skipped it earlier, but I'm going back to it. Um, I forgot to mention this, but it's a really good one. Another short, short role of yours, uh, "Awaken the Shadow Man." Uh, another really good movie. Yeah, that was fun. Those guys were in earnest. They had a good time. You know, it's funny to watch egos, young egos at work. <laughs> 
Sure. Yeah, you're in that with, uh, if anyone hasn't seen it, uh, James is in Barty, uh, Gene, Gene Smart and Emily Gene Summers. Smart, Gene yeah. Smart. You played your ex-girlfriend in the That's right. film. That's right. Now that I would have <laughs> never done. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Rob, Robert, uh, Bobby, this has been awesome. Thank man. you very much. Right. Am I the first thing? repeat? No. I'm sorry. No, but no. you could be the first three Pete, probably. Okay. I had the first three Pete for cameo. <laughs> for Valentine's Day. Yeah, we, right. we'd love to have you back, man, anytime. Just yes, let me sir. know. Sure. Uh, where can people find you? Plugs, all that. Cameo.com slash Bobby Ray Schaefer. Cameo.com slash Bobby Ray Schaefer. All right. Yes, sir. The links will be in the description. So uh, thank you again, Bob. Thank really you. Appreciate it. Appreciate it. Yeah, a lot of uh, fun. We'll talk to you next time. I will. See me in WV. I will. I will. All right. <laughs> All right, brother. Good night.